My husband is on that trip to go preach at Matabele in church in OD. Please enjoy the sermon and kindly watch until the end for it is the best part. The greatest commission or the greatest omission. Let me call your collective attention to the book of Matthew 28 verses 18 to verse number 20. Paul says at verse number 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 20, the Bible says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. I wish to make a, a disclaimer, or rather a caveat from the start that when I preach, whatever I say also applies to the person of my very being. And let me also say that today God has given us an opportunity to come and have some hard conversation with him. Our title, The Great Commission or The Great Omission. Tomo Air Polo finds its location within the context of Matthew 28, verses 18 to verse number 20. The Bible says all power has been given to him in heaven and in earth. And the question is why? Remember when Jesus was addressing the audience of verse 18 is the disciples. According to the narrative of Matthew 28 and 27, it seems as though this was the first meeting of Jesus and his disciples. From the tomb or from the grave. And then when he meets them, he says to them, All power is given unto me in heart. Was it significant for Jesus to talk about power at this particular meeting with the disciples? Remember that Jesus came at the time of the Roman government. He came at a time when the Israelites no longer had a king, as it were, in the Old Testament. They were under the authority of the government of Rome at the time. And all along, the Hebrews and the Jews were looking forward to a Messiah who could deliver them from the oppressive regime of the Roman. They were not looking forward to a weak God instead of a powerful God. They were looking forward not to a weak God, but to a powerful God who could save them from the government of Rome at the time. For some reason, then it got announced that a child was born, and his name is Jesus. He shall save his people. And to cut the long story short, we know it very well. The common expectation of the nation of Israel at that time was that Jesus should deliver them from the yoke of bondage, from the yoke of the Roman government. But he was going to become king on earth. They expected some majestic power, revelation and showcasing at the time. And lo and behold, 30 years of his life was quiet. No single sign of power. Until he began his public ministry. To talk about this Messiah. He began to exercise demons. He started speaking to nature and the sea could obey. And man was astonished and shocked and saying, What kind of man of man is this? He saw power in this call. The disciples were also impeded. And they were also pregnant with expectation. This man must deliver us from the Roman bondage. He did wonderful, miraculous things until one night. On Thursday at night, he got arrested. They battered him, they slapped him, they spat on his face. The disciples fled, disappointed. We thought this guy was powerful. How could it be? Not even allow people to handcuff him just like 
they were under a delusion, probably. Everybody was sure that God is such, that Jesus is such a weak God at the time. But at one point he was carrying his own cross to cover. He stumbled and eventually fell down. Why and weak and debilitated. Until Simon was called on to assist him to carry his own cross. Come on, Jesus, are you serious? Is this all that you can give us? Come on, bro, you are so weak at this point. You mean you can? You are God. The disciples left him, except John and Peter. At the cross, the mob started remarking that he saved others. Himself, he cannot save. Save yourself! Baba Nemba Mapola, Baba Nemba Mutanga, 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 if, if Jesus, you were God, how could you allow death to vanquish? How can God die? And then one says that when Christ died, his disciples were disappointed. They were hopeless. That is why when he missed them, he starts off by saying, Oh, power! In case you had any doubt, I'm here to vindicate myself. I'm here to be a friend that I am still the man of authority. I'm still powerful. Oh. I'm God. The man of power. The psalmist says that uh, twice I've heard it that power belongs to God. And in my 18, he reaffirms that he is still powerful. And not just powerful, he says his power is all powerful. Like it is holistic, it is complete. And he says, His power is given to me in the following territories in heaven and in earth. And before he went to the cross, the devil was almost saying that he is the God of this world. And after the cross, all that changed in an instant. So when he speaks to the disciples, he speaks to them to deal with their initial problem of disappointment and hopelessness. You know, in the ancient days, when a king would send his messengers from one and uh, from his territory to another, you give them a letter. It would be a letter of authority to accept them under his own authority. So Christ, when you are saying, "All oh, power is given to me," he was saying, "I'm accepting my own authority." And when I speak to you. Speaking from within that authority. Don't you think that verse number 18 is just a coincidence or by accident or just a chance? It is delivered by God to put it before the next statement. Are we at verse number 19? Are you there? Verse 19, if you are there, can I say, I say amen? Amen. amen? 19, the Bible says, Go ye therefore. Yeah, really. I say amen to that. Go <laughs> ye therefore, yeah. brother or sister. Can we just unpack this a little bit? Mm. Let's start off at the word go. Are are you talking about the name? Yes. What is the whole phrase? Go ye therefore. No, we call it the tamaya. It's not permissive. Ha, you could be theta. It's mandatory. La la la. It's a command. You can only command if you have authority, and that authority we have in verse 18. Go ye therefore. Excuse me, bro. We are not at the chat board here. It's, it's beyond discussion point. It's action time. So write the vote in heaven. Come on, brother. Our problem is right here. Go ye therefore. Do we know what our theme this year at the general conference level is? I will go. I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. Yes. I will go. What do you think it comes from? Yes. This commission is go ye therefore. When you look at the word, when you look at the word go, it connotes, rather it denotes some constant action, some constant movement. Do you think that we are called a movement for no particular reason? When you look at the children of Israel, they are history. It's a history of people on a constant move. All about that. We are not here to camp in one place permanently. Why this church? That's why the Seventh-day Adventist church is born out of the 
Millerite movement, we are a movement, but at the same time, so we must be moving all the time. Okay? So I'm here to tell Matebele, uh, Matebele, some of the Adventist church that okay. your problem and my problem today is that we are filled with members who don't want to go. We are filled with people who want to sit instead. Amen. And sit at that corner, that corner, this corner, in the middle, secure your place. If by any chance you sit there, that is Mr. and Mrs. Lord, brother. Don't make no mistake about it. In the afternoon, let's get in the community and do the outreach. We are nowhere to be found. Our problem is going in there. Come on. You attend our church board, uh, our church board meetings. Our church manual says that evangelism is our biggest agenda. The biggest agenda of any church board meeting is evangelism, but it is not in reality. Go ye there. Man, we are not serious. Do, do, do you honestly think we are serious about going there for? We build small churches. Number one, because when it comes to the gospel, we are lazy thinkers. And we do a what? An average job. When you are working hard in the government, in the corporate world, wherever you are, you want to get promoted, you want to give your best. The cream and the cream of you. When it comes to God's work, there are brothers who are so, so, so furious. Why are we going to spend so much, man? All efforts. Give, give us more churches. We are talking demographics. We are talking the population here. When Jesus left, he says to his disciples, Go ye therefore. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. He says, uh, He says to them, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Can you just summarize that? Are you, are you using the word power here in verse 8 for the first time? We met the word power in the book of Matthew 28, verse number 18. And then we meet it again. Within the context of the gospel, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, Jesus was commissioning disciples to go and preach the way. To go and preach the way, which is sometimes known as the gospel. And what is the gospel? Romans 1 16 says, for not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. The gospel is Jesus. Amen. Mm. Mm. Oh, when we go out, we must preach a powerful gospel and not a weak gospel. Mm. Yeah, Holy, that the Seventh day Adventist church has no power. People well, find power in the Pentecostal movement. They say, You guys don't have power. We should not become defensive. We should pause and introspect. Why do people generally feel that we don't have the power? The gospel, the, the gospel is power itself. Are we sure we are preaching the right gospel? How can we preach a powerless gospel? How can it be? And now he says this gospel is Jesus and also in preaching the gospel there must be another instrument and tool in the person of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Go to the book of Acts chapter 2. Immediately after receiving the Holy Spirit, 12 men, and I'm saying how many people? 12, 12 men, 12 disciples. Never allow for the more than two verse number 41. It says, Acts 2 verse 41. They that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. How many? 3,000. Not 3,000 in 12 years, in one day. By 12 men. 
So if you, if you know math, if you do 3,000 divided by 12, you'll get 250 per head, per disciple. How many are you in this church? Do you think you need to be more than 12? You need some conference president to come here, pitch up the tent, so that you can get the whole of Matabili. No. Man, with no means could make it. How about you today in the 21st century? Come on. Is there any reason why we are less than 50 in this church? The Great Commission or the Great Omission. Acts chapter 2 verse number 47 says, towards the end it says, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Daily the church was growing. Our churches only grow when there is a transfer in or transfer out. Baptized in five years. This actually explains why. When we build the church, we just build a small and a horrible thing. It shows the vision of these people. The mission of these people. Do you know the mission statement of this church? The mission statement of the Seventh day Adventist church is to preach the gospel and to make disciples of all people and preach the gospel within the context of the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, 6 to 12. But how are we going to achieve that? If we have a boy there for problem, seriously speaking, come on. Yeah, the gospel is personal before it becomes a collective thing in church. Acts chapter 5, verse, Acts chapter 4, verse number 4. It reveals that 5,000 men, excluding women, were baptized in one day as well. How this is the challenge to us. Let's go to Matthew 28, verse number 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. How many people? All nations. I want you to assess yourself and see whether you are you are executing a great commission or a great omission. If you are not a gifted preacher, buy a book. Give people in your neighborhood. You have a WhatsApp, you have a phone which has a WhatsApp application. Share status is about God. Let's all now send this status about selfie after selfie after selfie. And all that people know about you is this selfie girl, photographic girl. We need to repent. We need to get converted. Let's face it there. When you go out there in the world, when you're mainly, oh, no, no, you know me, I'm Mr. So and so. Uh, I'm that guy who did that project. Uh, I used to be a, a CEO of that company. Uh, currently, I am at uh, this position. Uh, I'm very proud of myself, you know, our efforts and whatnot. Our introduction is defined by what? Is defined by creation. By creation. And do you know that you are above creation yourself? A human being is about creation. How do you identify yourself by creation? Identify yourself by God. Let me tell you how you should introduce yourself. When you meet people, tell them that I am a servant. They are a Christian. Huh? I'm running a multi-million uh, mega project, whatever company, about 100 employees. I'm busy. The world is running. The world, be not people at once. Can I just run and I can't get it? Today we are thankful that you spoke to us in this manner. None of us is better, and this message is not one of condemnation. It's a message that says, "Wake up from our own slum." That there is so much ground to cover in this place, yet limited time. Help us this day. Heavenly Father, to understand our, our true meaning of existence, that we exist, mm. to keep the commandments of God, and to fear God, and in the process, to proclaim the gospel, particularly the gospel of Revelation 14, 6 to 12. Help us, Lord, that we should not sleep at night, as long as this church is unfinished. We should not sleep peacefully, as long as there are still about 99% of people who don't know our message as a church in this village of Matebi.
I pray for men and women in this church. I pray for the church leadership. I pray for everybody that may they pull together. At the same time, I know the devil hates this message particularly. He doesn't want to know, he doesn't want the world to be warned about the wrath that is coming. Mm. Lord, I'm asking that if need be, pour your Holy Spirit, pour your letter in, in this church so that we may preach a gospel with power and not a weak gospel. Mm. Lord, help us to appreciate the fact that the time we spend listening to you is not a waste of time. Mm. How I wish to pray that if we are offended, Lord, heal us in the process. Comfort us, Lord, in the process. I'm asking that may this place never be the same ever. Mm. I pray that every soul that is here should begin to do their own part. And I also pray, Heavenly Father, that help us not to be lost in the process of saving others. Help us ultimately to make it in your kingdom. While we are here, Lord, be with us in our own personal struggles. Help us to find joy from our own struggles because they make us to be the champions that we ought to be at the end of the day. Mm. Help us to serve you with joy. I know the year is coming to an end. There must be an election process that must take place in this church. I'm asking that avail your people. Help them to avail themselves for your cause, Lord, and not to look at the work as a burden, but as something that they could do with joy. When all else is said and done, bless your church and bless your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, this message really, really spoke to me. Normally, after a message, I just keep screaming and saying, Oh, honey, that is beautiful. Oh, I love that. But this time, I was like, No. Um, I just said to him, Honey, can I not comment on your message? I want to act on it. I just want to act on it. And so he did. Stay tuned. After lunch, the brother thought he was going to rest, but no, it was time to act on his message. Time to go, Oti. Shai, let's go. We got our Bibles and a bunch of Christian literature, and we went into our neighborhood praying with people. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 from this exercise is that yo, people are ready people are ready to hear from the word of God. people are ready to have us pray for them people are ready to accept christian literature yet we're just set up nicely and comfortably with what they need are we are we really loving our neighbors <laughs> And what really touched me the most was the fact that they would keep calling each other like, while they are about to pray. Let me go call my wife, let me go call my neighbor, let me call the kids, hey kids come. And the kids were just so happy. I pray to God that I be able to start a... Children's 
As leaders, you won't even have an answer for what them. Mm -mm, not for now. That's why we talk about our lesson. Okay. Give us a hearing thing. How about you? What's that? Ah, number three. That's it. 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 ก็ปั่นน่ะครับสารินแต่มันกินได้ก็ยังช่วยช่วยสิมิสตรีฮะแต่พูดจะบ้านน่ะครับพี่ครับเอาหน้าเล่นอะไรก็เลยใจปั่